Welcome back to Wrenches with Rock with your host, Jason. Today I'm going to be doing a great job on a 2014 Dodge Avenger. It's got the four-cylinder engine in it. We're going to do front pads and rotors um, on both sides. I'm just going to record the driver's side to save me a little bit of time. Um, I do do this for a living, so got to be efficient. So right now I'm just lifting the vehicle off of the ground. You will have different variations of disc brake systems on vehicles, but generally speaking, they all are going to work the same way. You're going to find different types of hardware or different types of uh, pin styles, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if you got any questions on a specific vehicle or if yours is set up differently and you need help figuring it out, just let me know. I'll be here to answer questions. Right now, I am just trying to get my the right size Allen key here to get these uh, covers off these lugs. He's got aftermarket wheels, and they have a cover on here that's held on with a Allen. I think it's eight mil. Ah, nah, not sure. I don't remember. Not important. Yours will be different. All right. So I've got my cover off. Now I'm going to move in a little closer here. And there are my lug nuts. Uh, if you're doing this on the ground, you're going to want to break these lug nuts loose before you jack the vehicle up. Otherwise, that wheel is just going to spin. You won't be able to put any torque on the lug nuts. If you're using an impact like I am, then you can just go ahead and lift it up and bust them loose. Uh, I ran into problems with this one, uh, getting it off. It looked like somebody had hit it with a hammer before or, or something like that. It's kind of messed up. Um, typically, you don't you don't run into things like that. But, uh, bam, there we go. Caught it. So I'm just going to take my 19-millimeter uh, lug nuts off. And I'm going to remove the wheel. And this is going to expose your brake rotor, which is this big disc here. Um that's all messed up. This is what happens when you uh, go past your, your wear indicators and just run metal on metal into the rotor. It destroys it. So you're going to want to remove these two bolts, this one closest to you here. And on this bottom side, I'm trying to get a good shot. There you go, that big one to your bottom right. So bam, you got one there and one below it. Now, if you look, they're holding this caliper, your brake caliper, this shiny thing over here to your left onto the spindle. So you're going to want to remove those two bolts to remove the brake caliper bracket with the brake caliper. There are other methods. This is just the way that I could do it the quickest. So I'm figuring out what size I got back there. In my case, they're 18 millimeter. I'm going to turn the wheel towards me to get some room to work, and I'm going to use my impact. You may be using a ratchet, and I know I blocked the view here, but I'm just going to put it on that bolt and drive it out. And then the same thing on this bottom one here. Put it on the bolt, and I'm just going to drive it out. I'm going to grab my bolts. I'm going to put them someplace safe. They're both going to be the exact same. Um, you don't have to worry about top and bottom. Uh, some vehicles may be different, so pay attention to that. But on my particular case, they were both the same. Then your rotor should just slide off. Sometimes there are screws uh, in between those lugs right there that will hold the rotor to the hub. And they're a pain in the butt to get off, and that's a whole other day. Uh, to push, to get your brake pads out of your caliper, you're just going to, in my case, you're just going to push them out. In your case, it's probably going to be like that. Sometimes you have pins that go through the pads. Those are on German vehicles typically, um, and, and and Toyota uses that that kind of system. So 
note that I know a lot of people don't don't like to hang the calipers um, by the brake line. I've never, as long as I've been doing this, I've never had a problem um, just letting it hang. You know, they sell hooks and uh, stuff. Uh, you know, it depends on how they're set up. You know, like you want to pay attention to how it's set up, but usually when you just got a, a thick rubber brake line like this, you're not going to have any problems just letting it hang right there while you uh, grab your rotor and your brake cleaner. So you're going to want to clean off this brake rotor very well. They ship them in an oil to keep them from rusting um, and looking new. So you want to clean that all off. Otherwise, it's going to burn off when you drive the car and smoke everywhere, and it's going to scare the shit out of you. So uh, I cover mine front and back. Uh, the stuff evaporates very quickly, so you just you know you want to grab you a rag and and wipe it off. Ideally, you probably want to do a better job than I just did, um, but I always seat the pads, drive around and stomp on the brakes just to make sure everything works properly. So if they're going to smoke, it normally happens with me and not with the customer. So we're going to slide our brake caliper back on here and reinstall these two bolts we took out. We're not going to put any pads in at this point. We're just going to reinstall the brake caliper bracket. Sometimes it's dependent about to line these up, um, you know, so you just you line them up, make sure you can hand tighten the bolts in there. You don't ever want to tighten the bolt with an impact or anything of that nature until it is uh, it, it is at least twisted in by hand um, and you made sure that you're not cross-threaded. So I'm going to use my impact to slide these in on my number one setting, which is basically no torque at all. Uh, I, I just use it for speed. You don't want to womp these. Um, you know, I'm sure you could and you would get away with it. I know I have in the past. I'm not going to bullshit nobody. I uh, tell you, ain't going to break that fucker your first time doing it. But it's always a good idea to just slowly, uh, slowly put them in with your impact on a low setting. And then once they're snug, just grab your breaker bar like I'm doing here. And I'm just going to make sure that they're nice and tight. You don't need to use a deep socket. I just do it to keep the handle free and clear, and I can pull on it pretty good. So just basically like having an extension on a, on a shallow socket, but my deep was just quicker and easier, so I use that. All right, bam. Make sure there's, there's a torque back down. So then you got two bolts facing you right here. You can see one at the top and then one at the bottom on the left side of this caliper right here. You're going to just want to turn this top one loose. You don't have to take it all the way out. You, you, probably, you don't even really have to, to turn it loose. It just makes things swing easier uh, if you do. So I'm just going to turn it, uh, you know, a quarter turn loose. And there you have it. You probably didn't see me. I didn't see me. I apologize for butchering this angle. So I'm going to turn that one a little bit loose. Then I'm going to go get my electric ratchet. My Milwaukee. Shout out Milwaukee. Um, and I'm going to pull my pin out here. So sometimes the bolts aren't aren't also the pins. Sometimes there's a pin with threaded holes on the end, and then you've got a bolt that bolts into the pin. So it's depending on your setup. Uh, yours could be like this and yours might not, but if you have slide pins, you're always going to want to remove your slide pins and re-grease them, uh, and this is the correct way to do it. Um, I've seen people skip this step many times. You're just going to want to, uh, you know, I clean them off um, if they're dirty or nasty or anything like that, um, and I just re-grease them. And I'm just going to slide that guy back in there, and I'm going to completely forget about the top one for the time being. Or I put it down, but I do forget about the top one. So Another thing I'm going to say is that uh, I I did not do the hardware. Um, you can, and you might not, but uh, usually if the hardware is okay, 
Uh, I'm not going to do it just because it's got a little bit of rust on it. Um, you know, sometimes you put the new hardware in and, and it's finicky, you know. The, it's a hit or miss. Um, I don't know if you're going to squeak or squeal or rub or anything like that. So it's just easier to not have to do the hardware, to be honest with you. So I'm going to use my brake caliper compressor here that I think I got from Advanced Auto. Uh, to compress my brake caliper. And basically, I'm just, you know, compressing the piston in there. And then I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to grease my points of contact with my pad. You could just do this to the back side of the pad when it's uh, in the brackets if you want, or you could just, you know, grease the back of the fins now. Don't don't really matter either way. You just don't, you just want to grease it so it doesn't squeak. I don't know what made me do it this way. Typically, I just put the pads in and then paint the grease on the back of the pads. Or you could even put that stop squeak on it. Um, there's some good products out there that, that help. So, you know, break squeak. Um, so whatever you can do to help eliminate that is, is, is the best thing possible for you. So... I'm going to put the wear indicators on my pads because they didn't come with them on them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But uh, you'll see a little intention, and you just want to make sure the indicator is pointing in like so, the long part pointing out. And I'm going to put that guy, I'm going to grease the tips of my pads here that ride in the hardware. Just lightly. Bam. I'm going to slide everything back in. And I will show you how this goes in in a little bit better of an angle. Bam. And bam. So, everything is fitting back together smoothly. Now, it took me forever to do this. So, my piston kind of came out a little bit in my caliper up there. Uh, I compressed it a little prematurely, as you'll say. But, it's a good thing because I also did forget to grease that top slide pin. I'm sure I would have realized either way. I hope I would have realized either way. But nonetheless, I realized right here. So I'm going to remove it. I'm just going to slide it out attached to the caliper. Well, I still don't think I've realized just yet. I catch it. I catch, I catch it. There we go. All right, so I just slide it out, right? So the pin is still bolted to the caliper. I'm just going to grease it, and then I am going to slide it back in, and now I'm going to have to push the piston back in on the caliper. Just compress, just, just do all this and then compress it and slide it down so you don't have to be like me. And bam, I'm going to slide it all back together. I'm going to take my greased bottom slide pin and I'm going to slide it back in there and I am going to twist it by hand a little bit and I'm going to tighten that puppy down with my Milwaukee electric ratchet which can handle 150 foot pounds of torque um, manually and will do 70 foot pounds of torque electronically I believe. So I'm also going to get my hand ratchet and make sure those two bolts are snug. I stop recording here. 
but uh but definitely grab you a uh a nice breaker bar.